Well, my name is Jim Caseman, and uh, again, for those of you that might be tuning in for the first time, we are in the midst of uh, doing a short series on the life of Jim and Kathleen Caseman from as far back as they can remember all the way up to the ministry. And of course, now we're what we really want to emphasize is faith and the Holy Spirit. That's how this ministry was established, and it's the way we still operate. So in the last, uh, we stopped in the last session, uh, we got, we we're talking about Sister Baker and how I said she lived, or she said she wanted to live, so I declared she live and not die. So that was two hours to live on Saturday. Still alive Saturday night, still alive Sunday, still alive Monday, still alive Tuesday. And then Tuesday night, of course, I shared the scripture with her and that bright light went off in the room. And, uh, and so then the next morning, I, uh, I um, got a phone call if I would come to the uh, hospital right away, and I did. And then we left off where I asked if I could go enter the room. The door was closed, and I came into the room, and he was not there. I ended up at the foot of the bed of Sister Baker, and she's, she's gone. They pulled every, all the tubes, everything out of her, and the sheets pulled over her head. And that's when I found out that the devil's got a machine gun. <laughs> oh, man. My mind was going crazy, you know. Smith Wigglesworth, I think that's the one who it was, grabbed that woman, pulled her out of the bed, slammed her up against the wall, commanded her to walk, and then on and on. And then I'd get down into my heart, because this is where God speaks. He's in my heart. And it's just a small, still voice. Don't do it. Well, that's not God, because she said she wanted to live. And uh, I'd go back up to the head again, and ay, 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 it was just noise up here. Go back down into my heart. I don't know. I did that several times because I knew that if anybody's going to be raised from the dead, I'm going to be there. <laughs> and, and, and of course, there's all this, you, you got to do it now. You got to, you know, you got to command her to live. You got to command her to come out of that bed, or you got to pull her out of that bed, slam her up the wall, against the wall, you know, like Smith Wigglesworth did. And, and I knew that if God, well, see, I'm still learning. If this would have been to raise her from the dead, the gift of faith would have been in operation just like that. It had been over with. But once you've got to start questioning it, do I have faith? This is, or is it God? Then you know God's not in it. But I didn't know that. I had not yet had the gift of faith in operation that much to really know. And so then I, uh, I realized that if I do this in the flesh, the psych ward is the next floor up, <laughs> and and that'll really be the end of the ministry. This is a small town. They'll know for sure I'm crazy, and not that I care, you know, because I want to be there. If there's going to be someone raised from the dead, I want to be there. But if God's not in it, I don't want nothing to do with it either. And so then I finally knew it was over with, and that there was not going to be any, she was not going to be raised from the dead. I didn't understand it, so I went home. And of course, Kathleen greets me. She says, "How's Sister Baker doing?" And I said, "According to the word, according to the word of God, she's healed and she's whole." <laughs> and I went upstairs to the bedroom. And I says, "Lord, I have got some questions to ask you." Now, before I could even ask the first question, or any questions, he said, "Would you like to know what the bright light was in that room last night?" Well, I never even thought of asking God. And he said, it was me. I appeared to her. And she changed her mind and decided to come home with me. That she didn't want to live. And I knew she had a horrible first marriage and she was, and that she'd been healed of cancer six months prior, medically documented in a Catherine Crusade, uh, crusade uh, meeting. And then she comes back home and she attends a church that's teaching that we're a cult, that faith stuff's all a cult, where her daughter's attending our church and she's being even taught faith. She's living in a church where she's not being taught faith. And uh, so she made a decision to, she was tired. You know, all that pain and things in her life, it was time to go home. Well, then I was left holding the bag because everybody in town, now well, that preacher said she'll live and not die. Well, that's okay. And so then, I, I, then next thing that happens, this whole wall 
that I'm facing turns into a colored screen. And it's a huge body of water out there with waves. And then I would see a hand come up and somebody shout for help. And then it would go back under the water again. I guess that happened several times. And then the interpretation came in here. Once you're out in the middle of the lake grounding, it's too late to shout swimming instructions from the shore. So as they were reading all these scriptures to her from the side of the bed, they were, um, in effect, giving her instructions to get healed, but she's, she's all consumed with the pain and everything else that she's just, good, you know, it's a hard time even concentrating, I suppose. And so it was just too late for her. She didn't go to a church to learn how to swim. Instead, she went to a church that didn't teach her how to walk by faith or how to swim and, and what have you, if you, however you want to put it. And so it was over with. Well, I uh, go downstairs and the phone's ringing. And here the husband wants me to bring the message at the funeral. Oh, come on. And of course I agreed to, but no, this is the church that teaches I'm a cult. And I'm gonna go into that church to do the funeral message for this woman. So I tell you, so I did, but it was, I've had <laughs> easier days, <laughs> but we did it. So anyway, that's my story about Sister Baker. And of course the importance of knowing God's voice, being led by the spirit, and when you're in faith or not in faith. You know, there's a, you can be in faith, you can be think you're in faith and you're not. God's not in it. And so you have to know the difference between the two. All right. Well, now we're coming back to where we were. You know, we left off and talking about all these Bible studies, these homes that turned into Bible studies and, and everything and how Mark and Brenda come up to help me. And then how we got lawyers and accountants to help us to, to set up uh, properly the church government, the Articles Corporation, and accounting and, and all this sort of stuff. And uh, matter of fact, I felt, now I was responsible for them because uh, I ordained them through the, to my church, didn't know what else to do. Where else am I gonna ordain them but through the church I'm pastoring? And to give you an idea of just how uninformed I was and didn't know what I was doing, I went to Minneapolis uh, and, and I went to Assemblies of God bookstore. Now, their tenets of faith are about the same and everything. And so I went to the, the lady that was there and I said, uh, I would like to buy some uh, ordination certificates. And she's looking at me kind of strange. What do you want with ordination certificates? And about that moment, the light went on. Oops, this is not the place that you can't come in here and buy ordination certificates. They're not going to give them to you. <laughs> That's only for Assemblies of God. Oh, well, that's how I learned that one. So we went home. I don't know, I think whoever, Desi must have been, or somebody helped me. Anyway, we designed our own uh, ordination certificate, printed them, and, and then I was able to. But, I mean, this was not part of my vision at all. Everything that's happened up to this point that was not part of the plan. The plan was graduate from Rayla, teach people faith in how to be led by the Spirit, but not all of this. Well, anyway... So we did do that. We printed certificates and were able to ordain them, being that uh, I, was re I felt I was responsible for them, being I'm the one that had ordained them, so, or whatever, or raised them up, you know, to be the pastors and, and all of that. All right. Well, we're moving right along. And I'm going to, uh, I think the best thing to do is cut it off right here because I see what I'm about to get into and it might be better if I try not to interrupt that scenario. So we'll, uh, you just uh, um, continue to allow the Lord to bless you. And we'll see you in the next session. Amen.